It is straight up noon in the east, and we are awaiting the departure of former President Donald Trump from his home base in Florida in just moments from now. He's heading to New York City for what's set to be an unprecedented presidential arraignment in court. We're also awaiting a news conference from city officials in New York City on the Trump arraignment, what they want to tell people they're doing to get ready for the number 45's arrival. Hello, this is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner here with my co-hosts Kaylee McEnany and Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox Business correspondent Jerry Willis and Fox News contributor Douglas Murray. The former president is flying out of Florida to New York. He's set to spend the night at Trump Tower in Manhattan ahead of his court appearance. Criminal court tomorrow. And he's scheduled to face charges related to the hush money payments made to an adult film worker Stormy Daniels in the run-up to the 2016 election. New polling shows nearly half of all Americans believe these charges are politically motivated. Well, Kaylee McEnany, I, I don't know that you would be able to look at them much differently because of the timing of all of this and the fact that this case has been dropped so many times, including by the Department of Justice. That's right, Jeb Bush um, making that point. It's, it's interesting the unlikely allies you are finding for President Trump. Some of them political opponents, in this case, former uh, Jeb Bush, former Florida governor, saying Bragg's predecessor didn't take up the case. The Justice Department didn't take up the case. Bragg first said he would not take up the case. This is very political, not a matter of justice. In this case, let the jury be the voters. Uh, Bill Barr called it an abomination. Mm -hmm. um, the media, even some outlets defending the former president on this, The Economist prosecuting Donald Trump over Stormy Daniels looks like a mistake. And then the one really interesting piece I saw in the media was in the New York Times mm -hmm. um, by, it was a guest essay that was written. Uh, it's by a former federal prosecutor. And she says this, at least one thing seems clear. Mr. Bragg may have been the first local prosecutor to do it, but he probably will not be the last. Every local prosecutor in the country will now feel that he or she has free reign to criminally investigate. And before I move on from you, because you're the only person on the couch who has worked for our 45th president, mm -hmm. Um, talk to me, if you will, about the inner circle around the president right now that, that the American people should know. He's at his home in Mar-a-Lago. We had that picture up a little while ago, getting ready to leave with the motorcade right now. Yeah, he has his attorneys, none of whom I know personally. I know some folks who are still on his campaign. Jason Miller comes to mind, among a few others. Um, but what I would say, just you know, having had a relationship, of course, my former boss, uh, with this person, this is someone who loves this country. This is someone who always, when I saw him in decision making during a global pandemic that we had not seen in our hands, put the American people first. Um, he loves this country. He did not have to do this. He was an affluent businessman. A lot of people go into politics because they want fame or they want money um, in the aftermath. This is someone who had both of those things um, and stood up because he thought the country was at a tipping point. Um, and he doesn't deserve this, something that's been roundly criticized by even his political opponents. So, Emily, what can you tell me about the statute of limitations if, like, you or I did something? Would they apply? <laughs> uh, well, I, under this current administration, I wonder, Harris. Who knows? Who knows what would happen to us, too? Um, I will say that, so part of the argument here is that um, the, the underlying crime here we know is, is, or what we think is going to happen, is, is has to do with a federal elections law infringement. And that statute of limitations is five years. That's why some argue Alvin Bragg has shoehorned in what would have been a misdemeanor with a statute of limitations of only two years mm -hmm. on this federal elections law thing, because it enabled him to act actually seek a prosecution. And I know, you know, you mentioned sort of the unlikely allies as well. The, the flip side of that is how many elected officials have just um, sent, I believe, frankly, really shocking statements in support of this, jumping to conclusions, affording no sense of responsibility or duty of their office to afford someone the presumption of innocence, which they afford uh, rightfully so to members of their own party, but simply not this one. Maxine Waters says, he finally got indicted. I predicted he would. I predicted that Stormy Daniels would get him. Sometimes justice works. We have Adam Schiff say... Wait, she was rooting for the porn star? Yes, she says. <laughs> So, too, Adam Schiff says, you know, he says, but so, too, is the unlawful conduct for which Trump has been charged, even more grievous misconduct for which he is currently under investigation. There's been no conclusions to these investigations. We don't have these specific charges yet. Um, you know, Pelosi, of course, as we talked about, everyone has afforded the right to prove their innocence at trial, which was, frankly, a perversion of the system, in a statement. And note as well, finally, that Representative Bowman from this state, who 
says that Trump's protestations of this prosecution, of calling it a political persecution, that he says they are racist attacks on the DA, and yet Representative Bowman calling supporters of Trump dogs is somehow not racist. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.